is India's largest city. The Mumbai metropolitan area had a population of just over 30 million in 2008, and this is growing all the time. The city is India's financial capital. Until the 1980s, Mumbai owed its prosperity largely to its textile mills and seaport, but the situation is very different today. The city houses India's Hindu TV and film industry, Bollywood, as well as a plethora of top financial institutions, biotech industries, engineering firms and even atomic research enterprises. This is high-tech India, quite different from the image many people have of slums and poverty. And yet over half of Mumbai's population do still live in grinding poverty in the slums, many of them in Dharavi, one of Asia's largest slums with a population of somewhere between 500,000 and a million people. Dharavi sits on prime real estate that is being jealously eyed up by developers. This film shows some of the issues that face megacities like Mumbai in the developing world. Sometime this year, there will be a fundamental change in the world. For the first time in human history, more people will live in cities than in the countryside. For all we know, the balance has already tipped. The trend is unstoppable. Every week, one million people flow into urban centers. Into cities that aren't prepared for the torrent of surplus humanity. Pressure is building and spilling over. There are now one billion squatters in the world and counting. Welcome to CBC News Correspondent. I'm Avril Benoit. The allure of big cities is undeniable. The chance of fame and fortune and the foundations of a better life. The world's poor pour into our mega cities like Rio de Janeiro, Brazil, or Bombay, India, officially called Mumbai and unofficially Slumbai. More than half the city's population here lives in slums. This is the story of the little and big things that are being tried to tackle this massive and growing problem. The problem of too many people, too little space. India, population 1.1 billion and growing. Mumbai, the largest city, holds 10 million people. Here, slums cover just 6% of the land, yet hold 60% of the population. That's a staggering 6 million slum dwellers. Welcome to Dadavi, the biggest slum in Asia. Talk about density. There are as many as one million people here spread over just two square kilometers. But no one knows for sure. The government fears a census would give legitimacy to what is an illegal settlement. Dadavi lacks everything. Proper housing, drinking water, basic sewage. There's one toilet for every 400 people. As you can imagine, the stench is overwhelming. Yet amid the crush and the chaos, there is a sense of community. Commerce thrives. Most of the industry here focuses on getting the most out of what little they have. From patching and repatching tattered shoes, to recycling everything, anything. To some, this makes Mumbai a city of strivers. To others, it's just a city of slums. Well, the only thing real about Mumbai is its estate. It's real estate Mumbai. Every facet of our life and every aspect of our life is covered by slums in some form or another. If they decided to call a halt, the city would come to a grinding halt. Mumbai would come to a grinding halt without the slum dwellers. They don't just ride the trains, they run them and do all the other low-paying jobs that keep Mumbai's economic miracle on the rails. 
This is their morning commute. A ticket costs a few rupees, about one cent. Every day, six million passengers cram into Mumbai's train stations. It's a wonder the antiquated transit system can handle them all. So what defines a slum dweller? In fact, what defines a slum? These commuters might look well-to-do, but most live in slums, shanty towns with no legal standing. That makes them squatters, living on whatever land they can find. Their commute is like their lives. They squeeze into whatever space they can. Please stand back, stand Lost in the crowd, somewhere in this crush of people, are new arrivals coming in from the countryside, looking for a better future. Most will end up in the slums that riddle the city. You get the sense families are prepared to wedge themselves into every conceivable public space. They'll build their hutments, their shacks, along highways, bridges, sidewalks, and even along these tracks. Not far from the rail line, Mumbai's water pipeline. These pipeline dwellers are the poorest of the poor. They've come to Mumbai from villages in southern India. And they live in fear of having what little they have taken away. Anthony Swamy has a family of nine. <laughs> He has good reason to be worried. Check out the cost of urban renewal. These piles of rubble used to be homes. A wrecking crew has just swept through this slum, the first of two waves. Now all the residents can do is salvage what they can from the ruins. This slum pocket is along a thoroughfare. The city wants to widen the road. It gave little warning that the demolition was imminent. This is my house and this is my shed. This is your cow shed? Yeah, cow shed. Shubash Yadar has already lost the front of his home. His barn will be next. These are literally cash cows for his family. But as far as the city is concerned, the barn stands in the way of progress. On Monday, the wrecking crews are threatening to return and finish the job. How many years has your family lived here? I think family is living, my grandfather is living, and the father is, I think, 30 or 40 years. 30 or 40, 40 years. years. And it was illegal huh. all that time. Huh. It's the constant uncertainty that eats away at slum dwellers. Government surveyors can show up at any moment. And even if you survive the first clearance, there's no guarantee they won't be back one day. Arif Shait has lived here for 36 years. Everything beside this will go. This will left over. This is the leftover now. Now we want to clear the picture. Is this the last line? Every five years they change the plan. And then you are, you are the sufferer. How does that feel? It feels you are destroyed. You, are, you have no place. You have no thinking. Your, everything is gone out. Now, the pressure is mounting for more slum demolitions. Mumbai is in the thick of a real estate boom, fueled by India's breakneck economy. Land values have skyrocketed. Slums in central Mumbai are now on some of the most valuable land in Asia. So the Indian government has worked out a deal with developers, what they call a public-private partnership. Entrepreneurs can have huge parcels of land for free if they agree to build housing for the slum dwellers they displace. Problem is, there's little incentive to get things right. Increasingly, they build tenements for the poor people they've evicted farther and farther outside the city, where no one wants to live. Now, developers have their sights set on the biggest real estate prize of them all. Dadavi. 
Mukesh Mehta is a multi-millionaire real estate developer. He made his fortune far from these slums. Back in the 1980s, he went to the U.S. to build luxury homes in Florida. He's back with a grand plan to transform the slums of Mumbai. He wants to bulldoze much of Dharavi, including this neighborhood, creating a new community. And the local government has given him the go-ahead. He'll build tenements like this one. And while housing projects are nothing new to Dharavi, he says his plan is best. Coming here, what you see is the entire Dharavi. You can see from the top of the terrace. You can see some of the bad examples and not so bad examples of what has been constructed so far. Uh, what we've tried to do in the project is to provide space and privacy, as you can see between these two buildings. A uh, fair amount of space, like any other uh, well-planned uh, society or, or, or uh, uh, apartment complex. And all these thousands of uh, families, we hope uh, that we can provide with uh, high quality of infrastructure, beautiful gardens, schools, colleges, hospitals, uh, etc., so that they can uplift themselves and live in a, in a, in a far, uh, far better uh, environment than they're doing already. Uh, and, and that's the real purpose of this master plan. He wants to build tourist attractions too, thinking that outside money and outside ideas will revolutionize life below. And the cricket museum will be just beyond those uh, buildings. That's right. Meta wants to build a cricket museum in the middle of the Dadavi slum and a golf driving range. Where will the golf be? Where's the golf uh, the course? Golf is, the golf is right in front of that pink building. Uh, we'll have a strip which will be almost 100 meters wide and 400 meters long, uh, just, just for shooting the balls. So the cricket museum is over there. Yeah. And the golf driving range is over here. It seems incompatible with a community of slum dwellers. How, how do they fit together? First of all, I think there's a lot of talent within slum, slums. And just because they're poor, it's not that they, they lack the capabilities. I, I don't see why uh, uh, the slum dwellers cannot be playing golf or shooting a few balls. It's absurd in short. I need not elaborate. It's absurd an idea. P.K. Das is an architect and an activist. He's also a staunch advocate for more government involvement in providing slum housing, rather than relying on the schemes of developers like Mukesh Mehta. Well, government would accept anything that does away with government's responsibility. So I'm not surprised, I'm not enamored, I'm not happy that Mukesh is a plan that uh, government has accepted. The slum redevelopment program in its present form is a complete disaster in every sense. I don't want to take the high pedestal of Jesus Christ, but, uh, but I'll just say that they don't know what they're doing, so forgive them, Lord. Uh, it doesn't matter to me what people think or feel. I have to do my job. Uh, I have to do what I believe in. Dadavi is just the start of Meta's grand vision. He wants the government go-ahead to make Mumbai slum-free within 15 years. Now, this is a challenge, but I truly believe it's a huge, huge opportunity because the government is firstly very keen uh, to make Mumbai slum-free. My organization has put together a plan which we call Slum Free Mumbai Vision 2020, whereby by 2020 we can make the entire Mumbai not only slum free, but through that process make Mumbai a world class city. As you can see, Mumbai is a long way from being slum free. The good news is the slum dwellers have many allies across the city. Those allies are more like factions. Jokin Arputham is the leader of one faction. He heads up Spark, the National Slum Dwellers Federation of India. He says the slum dwellers themselves, not developers, should be deciding their fate. Yeah, I'm organizing people to question it. Who has given the mandate for you to change my life? These people have been consulted. Our people are part of this whole planning. Can it be done? You need to have the poor people who are living there they need to decide to change the lifestyle of our own. Then is the change will come. Without the people are to thinking for change, change will never occur. 
Rather than fight the developers and government, Jokin's organization has been constructing its own apartment buildings and also encouraging slum dwellers to move to housing projects outside the city. Case in point, Mankurd, 30 kilometers east of central Mumbai. But this redevelopment has been a disaster. The towers were built too close, elevators don't work, and toilet pipes that run on the outside of the buildings leak and splatter sewage onto the streets below. On top of all that, the dilapidated complex is too far from Mumbai. People who once worked near their old shanty towns are now unemployed and in many ways worse off than they were before. They're angry and so is Varsha Ayar, a university student who's trying to help out. Trust me, it's, it's, uh, I get a very terrible feeling of being helpless, not really doing anything for these people. Uh, I have just no words. I mean, it's it's unexplainable situation. And what I can, I, I remember there was not a single day when I've gone back home and I haven't cried. P.K. Das thinks his solution is better. The activist architect wants to fight government and build better buildings. These are his plans for Chandavili, the biggest rehabilitation site in Asia, a sprawling new community for relocated slum dwellers with broad spaces between buildings, central plazas, and working areas for transplanted industries from the slums. It's not just a dream on paper. Look, phase one is almost done, and 1,500 families are expected to move in here within the next couple of months. Eventually, 100,000 people are to be living in these buildings and some more over there. Now, the hitch is, this is 40 kilometers from downtown Mumbai, and trains, which are essential for the poor to get around, are nowhere around here. So the question is, will people really want to live here? It's a similar problem to that which vexes Mankurt. Two schemes, two similar visions, and a shared problem. But in Mumbai, the factions don't compare notes. They don't even talk. And that's too bad for the people back at the demolition site. Because at the appointed hour, the wrecking crews show up again. Backed by scores of police officers. But there are no local advocates to be seen, no activists to defend them. Instead, the bulldozers move in unimpeded and Shubash's cow shed is the first to go. <laughs> Shubash and the people of this slum are devastated and yet resigned to their fate. They know they must move somewhere and rebuild, scavenging what little is left of their possessions. I'm feeling very bad and very scared. What is doing my government? The government always telling we are, uh, uh, we are uh, giving the house to poor peoples and everything. They are removing the poor people from Bombay. This is what passes for urban renewal in Mumbai. What does city gives to us? Nothing. Bulldoze, throwing you out, asking you to get out of the city. If this slum dollar is not there, Mumbai will not be called as Mumbai. Bombay would not be no more Bombay. Because the slum dollars brought Modi, employment, energy to the city. So we are the one who build the city. Again, no goals, freaking trolls. I said, looking in the mirror, do you 
you know me, I think you Back in India, these young men dream of escaping their slum too. Not to flee crime, but to escape the aching poverty that grinds down their lives in Mumbai. Jay's the singer, but the lyrics are all Asif's. His angry song is about a world he knows intimately, the life of India's struggling working poor. Asif is trying to find his own way out of Mumbai's slums by working hard and saving his money. Six days a week, he heads off to his job, leaving his neighborhood behind, a neighborhood known simply, some might say bluntly, as squatter's colony. It's yet another of Mumbai's illegal settlements. In a strange way, Asif is the voice of India's slums. You might have talked to him on the phone. He works at a call center run by a British company, where he fields phone calls from Britain and North America. One of the new industries providing modest paying jobs to India's poor but well-educated. Asif is well aware that in real estate Mumbai, even a well-established slum like Squatters Colony is a target for demolition and development. I don't want to suddenly come back from my ship and see that and there's a notice board on my, on my wall hanging that you have to leave this place. There are people talking about this place uh, for a long time now that they want to demolish the entire place and build up buildings. That's happening for the last 10 years. So I know what's, I mean, where, when it's going to happen. Asif is proud of what his family has accomplished here, however modest and small the family home might be. Over the years, his father transformed a wooden shack in the slum into what's called a chal, a more solid, more respectable, but still illegal home. Now, Asif wants to build on his father's dream. He got from slums into a chal, and I want to move from chal to a flat. And hopefully if I do make more money, then I move on to a bungalow. That's what my ambition is. For the millions who can't get out, some at least are trying to find better ways to survive. At first glance, the heat, the flies, the stench of a municipal dump next door make this shanty town near Mancurd a poor prospect for hope. Yet I find it here. These women have formed their own micro-lending agency. They all save what little money they can each week and then put it into a pot. If someone has become sick or injured, then the money goes to them. If no one is in need, they draw for it. Winner takes all. Such a simple idea, but in the absence of government help or outside assistance, this savings club allows them to weave their own social safety net. <laughs> At first glance, this seems about as far removed from the slums and reality as you can get. Welcome to Slumbai's Alter Ego, Bollywood. The Bombay film industry makes more movies and sells more dreams than Hollywood. It's a evening of fun. But among the actors, an activist. Shabana Azmi is India's answer to Susan Sarandon, a star with the added clout of being a member of India's parliament. Tonight, she's attending Bollywood's equivalent of the Oscars to receive a Lifetime Achievement Award. Fourteen years ago, she starred in Dharavi, set in the Mumbai slum of the same name. And while she has appeared in scores of other films, it was this one that helped crystallize what would become her cause and her crusade. The movie is about a slum dweller who dreams of building a better life by building a small dye factory. But his dream is destroyed by a government demolition crew. Shabana Azmi plays his wife, a woman trying to salvage some dignity from life in the slums, but whose spirit is nearly crushed by the poverty of Dadavi. <laughs> Any kind of improvisation 
Are we getting into the bus or are we in the bus already no, at the bus? We're in the bus, okay. More than a decade on, Shabana Azmi is preparing for her next role, a movie about a mature couple that finds love. How does he rea uh, react to my uh, doing crochet all the time? I mean, does he make fun of that? That's what uh, I was thinking. Well, it's a very really nice thing to play with. Right? It's, down. <laughs> it's a light romantic comedy. But her mind is never far away from the cause that's closest to her heart. Between movies, she fights for the rights of slum dwellers, using her celebrity to lobby government, fight demolitions, and bring about change. We want slums to be upgraded. We want slums to be rehabilitated. We want decent housing for the people. We are saying demolitions don't serve any purpose. They create worse slums out of already existing slums. The challenges are so big. The slums are everywhere. Uh, it, it looks like uh, the problem is so vast that it would, it would be very hard to find a solution. Is there one? There is certainly a solution. We need to have political will. We need to put our heads together to see that when we talk about solutions for Mumbai, we don't speak only to a particular group of people who are the rich and the powerful and the mighty and the builder. You can't be coming to Mumbai and not visiting the And what about the builder, Mukesh Mehta, Mumbai's biggest mega developer? The man who wants to bulldoze Dadavi so slum dwellers can have new housing and a golf driving range. Turns out there's even hope on that front. When I got deeper into the project and I started interacting with slum dwellers, that's when it really sunk into me that my father was also one of them. Almost about 80 years ago. I'm getting emotional. He was one of them? In some ways, because he came from a village. And almost 80 years ago, with about 20 rupees in his pocket. And he made it big. And he educated us. And we, in turn, are doing whatever we can for the society. I know that um, the struggle is hard. Uh, we have a long way to go. Uh, but if we can sensitize, I think, not just the policy makers, but also people living in the city, for them to recognize that they have a relationship with the people who live in the slums. It cannot be a one-way relationship. You cannot say, I'll choose, I'll, I'll choose you to do cheap labor, and then you disappear into thin air. The rich and the poor will have to be accommodated together to, so that the poor also live a life of dignity. Only then can India become a power that it's happy with. From Mumbai to Rio, the race is on to find solutions to the growing slum crisis. We've seen some small answers, but we'd better find some big ones. Since the start of this documentary, 6,000 people around the world have moved from the countryside into cities. That's 143,000 people a day, 1 million a week. 52 million a year and most are heading into slum cities in this shifting world.